the parental route of drug administration. The parental route introduces drugs directly across the body's barrier defenses into the systemic circulation. Parental administration is used for drugs that are poorly absorbed from the GI tract, for example, heparin, and for agents that are unstable in the GI tract, for example, insulin. Parental administration is also used for treatment of unconscious patients and under circumstances that require a rapid onset of action. In addition, these routes have the highest bioavailability and are not subject to first-pass metabolism or harsh GIT environments. Parental administration provides the most control over the actual dose of drug delivered to the body. However, these administrations are irreversible and they may cause pain, fear, local tissue damage, and infections. The three major parental routes are intervascular, intravenous or intraarterial, intermuscular, and subcutaneous. Each route has advantages and drawbacks. Intravenous IV injection is the most common parental route. For drugs that are not absorbed orally, such as the neuromuscular blocker, atracurium, there is often no other choice. IV delivery permits a rapid effect and the maximum degree of control over the circulating levels of the drug. When injected as a bolus, the full amount of a drug is delivered to the systemic circulation most immediately. The same dose also may be administered as an IV infusion during a longer time, resulting in a decrease in the peak plasma concentration and an increase in the time the drug is present in the circulation. IV injection is advantageous for administered chemicals that may cause irritation when administered via other routes because the substance is rapidly diluted by the blood. However, unlike drugs in the GI tract, those that are injected cannot be recalled by strategies such as by binding to activated charcoal. IV injection may inadvertently introduce bacteria and other infective particles through contamination at the site of injection. It may also precipitate blood constituents, induce hemolysis, or cause other adverse reactions by the too rapid delivery of high concentrations of a drug to the plasma and tissues. Therefore, Patients must be carefully monitored for unfavorable drug reactions and the rate of infusion must be carefully controlled. Intermuscular Drugs administered intermuscular can be in aqueous solutions which are absorbed rapidly or in specialized depot preparations which are absorbed slowly. Depot preparations often consist of a suspension of the drug in a non-aqueous vehicle, such as polyethylene glycol. As the vehicle diffuses out of the muscle, the drug precipitates at the site of injection. The drug then dissolves slowly, providing a sustained dose over an extended period of time. Examples of sustained release drugs are halopridol and depomadroxyprogesterone. These drugs produce extended neuroleptic 
and contraceptive effects, respectively. Subcutaneous This route of administration, like intramuscular injection, requires absorption via simple diffusion and is somewhat slower than the IV route. Subcutaneous injection minimizes the risks of hemolysis or thrombosis associated with IV injection and may provide constant slow and sustained effects. This route should not be used with drugs that cause tissue irritation because severe pain and necrosis may occur. Note that minute amounts of epinephrine are sometimes combined with a drug administered subcutaneously to restrict its area of action. Epinephrine acts as a local vasoconstrictor and decreases removal of a drug such as lidocaine from the site of administration. Other examples of drugs given via subcutaneous administration include solids such as a single rod containing the contraceptive etnogestrol that is implanted for long-term activity and the programmable mechanical pumps that can be implanted to deliver insulin in diabetic patients. In the next video, we're going to talk about the other routes of drug administration.